Hey everybody, welcome back to the half hour of power. I am Joe and Brent. What the Mark, what have you done with Brandon? Uh, I I I I think I um kidnapped him and I put him in the closet. Special guest Mark is here filling in for Brandon. Brandon uh could not be on this one. We wish him all the best. Uh, yes. But Mark is here. It was supposed to be all of us. Yes. But it's just us. It's just Mark us. from the Toys of the Time Gone By. Nice to be here. Mark is the go to for Motu. Motu. So Mark wanted to join us for some of these Halloween shows, some of these horror shows. Yes. So what we did I'm very excited. Mark picked this movie. This movie is Demons. This is from 1985. Yeah. This is an Italian horror film, which uh I love Italian horror. Mark, how do you feel about Italian horror? I love Italian food. Huh. <laughs> Italian horror is great. G Italian giallos are great. That's right. That's right. Some of the best gorgeous films ever are Italian uh, giallos. Mm -hmm. So, Demons, we are going to do this, Mark. Typically, as you know, we will do the Rotten Tomato score, and Demons is on Rotten Tomatoes. And uh, that means we can still use Rotten Tomatoes because it's on there. Okay. I think if it wasn't on there, I would not ever use Rotten Tomatoes ever again. Of course, we only do the Rotten <laughs> Tomatoes for fun. Mark, what is your guess for the critic score of Rotten Tomatoes for Demons? 62%. 62%. You're kind of close. 73%. Wow. Yes. Pretty That's good. Shocking. What is your guess for the audience score for Demons on the Rotten Tomatoes? I would have to say 70%. 70%. Once again, you're close, but no cigar. 65%. <clears throat> wow. That's, that's funny. That is funny that Usually the critic a... scores are better than the audience mm. scores. That's not what I thought was going to be at all. Not at all. This is, of course, a fresh tomato on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> it is well, fresh, but apparently it's not good enough to be certified fresh. So I'm going to go ahead and certify it fresh. Big plump tomato. Yes. Beautiful. Nice, juicy, delicious tomato. <laughs> so, Mark, uh, this was your pick. So mm -hmm. uh, we're going to go through this month. You were going to join us. So you're going to pick a movie. I'm going to pick a movie. Brand is going to pick a movie. And then uh, I don't remember what the last movie was going to be. But we haven't told you that yet, so. But anyway, what made you pick this movie? Okay. Um, I've seen this before, but many years back. And I don't really remember too much of it. So, But I was looking through a list of Italian giallo movies. And it kind of stuck out at me because I've heard of it. you know. And I've looked at a, a few other movies. And I read the synopsises on those, and I thought this sounded pretty pretty fun. I thought this would be fun to do, this one, because it's for the Halloween season. I thought it would be definitely uh, something that goes with the Halloween season. Absolutely, absolutely perfect. Uh, let us read the plot synopsis here, because there probably are some people who haven't seen this. And then there are some people yelling at us, I've seen that! I know what it is! And turning us off. Well, <laughs> all right. All right. So here's a plot synopsis. 
a group of random people are invited to a screening of a mysterious movie only to find themselves trapped in the theater with ravenous demons. Uh, I would say that's a pretty accurate plot synopsis. Um, as you know, the last week, Brandon and I had some disputes. Mm -hmm. Agreements with each other over the plot synopsis of Victor Crowley. What do you think of the, about the plot synopsis for Demons? I think the accurate. This, I think it's pretty accurate. Definitely pretty darn spot on. Absolutely. So, <laughs> I love the lighting in this film. I love the way it looks. Mm -hmm. I love the the cinematography in it. This is directed by Mark. Who directed, directed this by Roberto Bava. Are you sure about that? Wait a minute, Dario Gento. I'm sorry, are I messed sure? up. Are you sure about that? You're close with the minute. first time. So this is Lamberto. Bava. Lamberto Bava. Uh, I'm just, sorry, I got it's all right. mixed I was, up. I was just giving you a little bit of crap for calling Lamberto Roberto. I, I got him mixed up. It's okay. Sorry, sorry don't sorry. shoot me. So. Don't bite me. As you know, Lamberto Bava is the son of Mario Bava. That's right, Mario Bava, who is one of the best. Oh my gosh, a lot of his movies are just gorgeous. He's made all kinds of movies all across the spectrum. I mean, he made Dr. Dr. Goldfoot and the Bikini Bombs. So whoa. Okay, but he also made some fantastic-looking films like The Whip and the Body with Christopher Lee. Gorgeous movie. The lighting in that is stellar, top-notch. As they say now, master class. That is a master class in cinematography and lighting. The Whip and the Body. Uh, Kill Baby Kill. I love that. I love the way it looks. The lighting. Those, those films do not disappoint. Mario Bava, of course, made what is considered to be one of the first, if not the first, body count film, which uh, John Carpenter's Halloween and Sean Cunningham's Friday the 13th were inspired by. Um, it goes by a, a few titles, A Twitch of the Death Nerve or The Bay of Blood, depending upon what release you get. Mm -hmm. uh, but those are all worth checking out. And of course, Mario Bava's Black Sunday. I can't say enough good about that. If you have not seen any Mario Bava films, go do that. Now, you've seen Mario Bava films, Mark. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's right. So his son, I don't think he quite reached up to where his father was, but, I mean, oh, my gosh. Demons is a fantastic film. I love Demons, and I was uh, delighted, <laughs> delighted that you picked this. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Mark. This is this is fantastic that you picked it because um I've picked a film that is very close to Demon. So I was like, oh, that's how he picked Demons. This is great. Just that was, great. I definitely so, had to pick that movie because the guy in the beginning looks like my uncle. So I had to pick it. Oh, okay. So yeah, the, <laughs> uh, I mean the lighting in this, the cinematography, like I've said, I can't say enough good about that. It's a very simple story, like we've already pointed out. Um, and uh, you see some shades of, like, Evil Dead in there somewhere? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, what I mean is, like, they unleash demons. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they only get, in this one, they only get possessed by the demons if they get bit or scratched by another demon. Well... And, and right, was, or was there something else? There was something else. Um, the thing is that if the blood, if the blood goes on a person, ah. they could also get turned into a demon if the demon's okay. blood goes on them. Okay, very good. Um, so this this starts out with a man that looks like your uncle. Are you talking about the man? With the uh, silver face, looks like your uncle. Your no, uncle has a silver face. This was a man on the train that would just popped up. He wasn't anywhere. He he wasn't involved 
at all. He was just a man on a train. Oh, and that's okay. what that's what it was. It just popped up. And he looked like my uncle. And I was like, I gotta watch this movie now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so so they go to a uh it starts out with uh people receiving tickets to a special screening. They go to a really cool movie theater. Oh, but the guy, the uh, was it Martipole or something like Metropole? And the guy yes. in the beginning, he was kind of a weird guy, though. He kind of looked like to me, like the guy from the um, uh, Phantom of the Opera, in a way, with yeah, that silver yeah. face. Yeah, he had a silver <clears throat> side of his face. And, oh, just, so this... <laughs> This did come out in, uh, I think we said it, right? 1985? Yes. This is based on a screenplay written by Dario Argento, Liberto <clears throat> Bava, Dardano Sacchetti, and Franco Barini. Now, I might have butchered some of those words. But, but anyway, Dario Argento produced this, helped write it, so you have all of this great talent attached to it. You also have, and uh, did you notice the effects? Who did those? These are all, of course, this is 1985, so you get <clears throat> really cool, really cool practical effects, really cool demon transformations, right? Very, very good makeup. Very good um, makeup. So that makeup, that was uh, Sergio Stavaletti. And I don't, I don't I don't know if I said his name right either. I was <laughs> but, but he worked with Argento a lot. Um you also have a really cool rock and roll soundtrack. Oh you yes. Know, I know you noticed all of that. You got oh, Billy yeah. Idol, you got Billy Idol, Motley Crue, mm -hmm. and and Rick Springfield. <laughs> right. You got to have those you, you got, got all those Rick, 80s guitars. Rick Springfield in there. And you also have Claudio Simonetti, who is uh worked with Goblin, was a member of Goblin, <clears throat> who scored a lot of Argento films. So you've got I don't know, you've got a lot of great talent working with it. And uh what is your favorite part of this movie? What's my favorite part? And you know my favorite part of this movie is, you know, are we going, I can pick any part of it. So Yeah, your, I, your, your favorite part. My favorite part is when he gets on that motorcycle and he has that sword and he just goes rumbling through it, slashing all the demons up. That's my favorite part, most epic part of the movie. Ah. That is a fantastic part. Yes, everyone, you heard it. There's a motorcycle that goes through the theater, and he has a, it's a, what, like a ninja sword? It's, I, I I think it's a ninja sword. Yeah, I think it yeah, is. He's got a sword that you would, you would, uh, once you see it, you would think a ninja would be carrying the sword. Samurai sword, maybe, is <clears> the proper, I don't know. It's a sword, but it's not like a, you wouldn't think a medieval knight would be carrying the sword. Here we are showing ourselves to be idiots by not knowing about <laughs> swords. But anyway, Ninja Sword, I think, maybe is fine. Um, but you go back to the beginning, and everybody's coming into the theater. They don't know what it is. They don't know what the movie is. And uh, this le there is a weird-looking silver mask, right, hanging on uh, a display of a motorcycle. And she takes it off and puts it on her face. Mm -hmm. Scratches her face. That's in the movie. That's in with. Yeah. That's in the movie as. Is that's in the movie itself that they're watching. Oh no, that's that's Isn't not that in, the, in the movie they're watching. No, that's not in the movie they're watching. So, oh, okay. okay. So yeah, there is a bunch of uh, there is some movie within a movie in this. So. This lady puts that on her, her face, scratches her face. They go to watch the movie. Now, this guy, I love this guy. Jesse, <laughs> Jesse and I love this character. Um, 
This is who, oh, what's the name of that guy? His name is Tony. He's played by Bobby Rhodes. He's fantastic. As you found out, he's in the second one also. Mm -hmm. Um, he is. He was in a lot of this stuff, a lot of things. <clears throat> uh, I was just trying to find some more things. So demons, demons two. Um, some stuff we might have uh, other people might have heard of. Um, Tony the Pimp. Okay. <laughs> uh, I thought I saw something in there. So Delta Force Commando 2, Priority Red 1. You know, a lot of fun stuff like that. Uh, the Commander, Treasure Island in Outer Space, Kamikaze. But yeah, um, I just loved his character. He was really funny. He was uh, confrontational. <laughs> and he's like, uh, don't mess with his woman. His two, his two women. He had a woman on each arm. Cheers, buddy. Yeah, man. He's he was a stud. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I believe he's still alive. He looks like it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So um, he has some of the best lines. Like so, when his girl turns into a demon, and the the transformations are great. I mean, oh, yeah, you see I their, like that. their teeth fall out and demons teeth pop in. You see their skin puss out. Um, and he's got this great line where like, if somebody's not helping them barricade to keep the <laughs> couple of demons out, it's like, you're useless. <laughs> ah! And then unfortunately he becomes a demon too soon. I was hoping he was going to be the hero just because I thought he was so cool kind of reminded me of <laughs> it kind of reminded me of uh like you know shaft yeah yeah that kind I don't of, know, I got, that type yeah. of thing I mean, I'm, shaft probably wasn't as abrasive as this guy but i don't know i don't know but anyway then you get to oh, there's there's just so much. We have so little time. So, people, you need to watch it. This is on YouTube for free, right? Yeah. And, and I ain't even commercials either. Yeah, and this is also on Tubi. So, you can check this, this sucker out on Tubi. The second one, what? It's also on YouTube. The second one's on YouTube also? Yeah. It's free oh, to okay. watch. Okay, yeah, so go check it out. See see where you want to watch it. This is one that uh, I own the VHS tape of this. And I kick myself now. For some reason, I got rid of a bunch of VHS tapes, and I, I shouldn't have done that. That was stupid. Stupid. At the <clears> time, <throat> it seemed like the right thing to do, but it was stupid. This is definitely one I would get the DVD of this. I would want to own it again. How about you, Mark? I know you're not. I don't. Um, you're not have, really uh, a collector of physical media anymore. Well, I mean, if I saw this being sold, I would buy it. I don't really see much really being sold. If I go to Walmart, they don't really have much on this. But if they had like a hollow, you know, for Halloween, like Demon One and Demon Two in like a package, oh, a nice package, that'd be. I good. would buy it. I would I would buy it because yeah. it's a it's a fun movie <clears throat> and it goes back to the you know the practical practical effects and that's what makes it so fun. It doesn't have it's not all realistic and crazy and you know it's just and a lot of the people a lot of the kids in the movie are idiots and I love it. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot it. of that a lot of that stuff you expect from 80s <clears throat> horror and yeah, really, really, from a lot of horror like this from any like, era, really, like the like, it's really. like they're just what are you guys doing? I mean, probably the smartest <clears throat> thing the guy did was uh, drive the motorcycle in the theater and slash up demons. That's that, like, yeah, that was the best. That might it have been reminded the best. me of the the game that we play. Like we could just ride a motorcycle and start. Oh, uh, the uh, yes. Uh, uh, it's escaping me right now. Yeah, oh. we do. We do enjoy the Dead Rising Two. Yes, the record sandbox mode. Just kind of reminded me of that. 
run around and kill all the zombies. Now this has got a fantastic demon <clears throat> transformation scene where a demon pops out of somebody's back. Oh yes. yeah. Oh, that was great. What'd you oh, think of that? Yes, yeah, he popped out of the girl's back. And the demon, the demon looks. I think the demon design is really good. It's really uh, creepy looking. Like the eyes, man. The light. The, the eyes, eyes are, are good. Shine. I mean, all the eyes. I think the sound design in this movie is pretty good. Also, the demon sounds are good. Um, there's also this weird side story that I do think this could have been cut out. Those mm -hmm. three. Was there four of them in that car with the coke? Oh, that that was. They were idiots. I. It's, I mean, uh, they were they were total morons, and it just kind of. <laughs> I mean, if there is one criticism of the movie, I would say, and this is like a, it's not a deal breaker. It's not a, something that I'm like, oh, I can't watch that movie ever again. There's people in there for no reason with Coke. <laughs> with a Coke can with Coke in it. So they, put their, they put their Coke inside a Coke can and they were starting it through a straw, which was funny. You know, it's funny. <laughs> But those guys didn't need to be in it because they're driving around a car outside of the theater and they just happen on the theater and they happen to break into the theater. <laughs> um, like what was the point just, of that, right? <laughs> it just felt like it was padding, you know, so there could be more people for the demons to kill. They didn't really do anything. They didn't help anybody escape. But it was fine. It was like, oh, okay, once you kind of get past that, oh, okay. That's not a terrible thing, but it is probably... Uh, <clears throat> I could, I would have cut that out, and the movie might have been, I don't know, mm -hmm. like maybe ten minutes shorter. It's not a very long movie; it's ninety minutes. <clears throat> yeah, well, I mean, if you cut those guys out of it, the demons wouldn't have any more anybody yeah, else they'd to run turn out. into demons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and uh, I just. I don't remember, but why this happens, but uh, a helicopter falls through the roof of the theater. Yeah. Now I've seen a segment on uh, a Dario Argento documentary about the making of this, <clears throat> but I haven't seen that in quite a number of years. So I don't remember why that happened, but they talked about it then. <clears throat> I mean, so there's, it's kind of a cool scene where the helicopter flies through, I mean, falls through the roof of the theater. The guy turns on, I think the blade spins around a few times and kills a couple of demons. He got the blade to spin around. Yeah. Not very much, did it? No, no. He was having a hard time getting it going. Yeah. So, and then, uh, of course, the helicopter <clears throat> brought them the means to climb up to the roof with yeah. uh, a grappling hook. It's funny how the guy <laughs> just, like, he was so badass, he just knew. He knew uh, how to use that grappling hook. Yeah, he just knew what to do. Like he just knew it. He was like he was like the he was like commando. Yes, he was. It was it was pretty funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff in that. I think if you like if you like the Evil Dead, you'll like this. I just, I mean, I guess he might be called the Ash character of this. He's not as cool as Ash. He doesn't really have the cool one-liners that Ashes has. No. But, I mean, if you want something that's... He wasn't that cool in the beginning, though. No, he wasn't. He found his chick he wanted to score with, and that he stuck with her the whole movie. Yeah. Got to give him that, I guess, right? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, th I think if you want something that's uh, a fun uh, gore fest that looks fantastic. That looks like they cared about how the movie looked. Cause when you watch it, some of the lighting is like, damn, they really gave a, they really cared about the lighting of this and the cinematography. <clears throat> There's some great scenes with the demons running up the stairs, uh, you know, ascending the stairway with all the light behind them. It just looks phenomenal. Yeah. And all their, all their eyes are glowing. Magnificent. Just a <clears throat> lot of stuff like that in this. Now, uh, Lamberto Bava, uh, he made quite a few films. I just wanted to talk about, just to say, a couple of the other things that he has done. <clears throat> um, so he made... Uh, oh, no. Well, he he did direct Demons 2. He directed uh, Devil Fish. I don't remember that being so good. A Blade in the Dark is a, another Giallo he made. That was pretty good. 
Um, <clears throat> have you seen any of that? A uh, demons too. You saw demons too. Okay. Yeah. I, I just watched it again. I watched it demons. Then I went to demons too. And I, I, I enjoyed that one too. Okay. Yeah. Um, there is a, uh, another one I've never seen. I've been meaning to watch for a while. It's called the ogre. Mm -hmm. And it is about a horror writer who is haunted by childhood nightmares. that moves into an old mansion in Italy with her husband and young son only to discover that the nightmares she's been having are real. I always thought that was interesting mm -hmm. and I've been meaning to watch it for a while. Never have. I don't know. Maybe we should, uh, well, I would watch that. I'd check Maybe it we out. should do that. So that one's from 1988. So, but anyway, there you have. You got any final thoughts on this, Mark? We're coming down to the end of this. Well, the 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 one the final thought for me would be um, when when we're going to talk about the ending here. So, oh yeah, the very already, very ending, very very ending when they found those people to pick them up in a jeep. And they yeah. drove off to some what I felt was I was and then he lost his girl because she turned into a demon yeah, got shot true. and fell off. Oh. But what I felt was going into demons two, which was fine, I thought maybe they would have continued it. Okay, so you're talking more about demons two now. But I, I thought okay. maybe they would have continued so the demons story. two doesn't pick up straight where this left off? No. Just kind of okay. It's, it doesn't pick up at all where this where this one left off. So I was kind of wondering what happened to the guy and you know why they totally go So is this to, actor to a new who, story. is he is he in Demons too? I didn't see him, but I saw the other guys, the guy you like. You saw Bobby Rhodes. Yeah, he was in. He's in. He's an exercise guy, and he was like, he was like obnoxious. Uh, you know, we'll have to. Maybe we'll have to do demons too at some point. Yeah, maybe, maybe before the end of the year. But there's other people that are in it. The guy that was doing the sniffing the coke out of a coke can, he was in it. So uh, there's a few okay. people that were in it okay. that had different that were different people in this and. You know, because they would they would have been demons or dead. So, okay, very good. You know, um. <laughs> but that's okay. They 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 wanted to do a whole new story. You know, it does, but it does in a way, mm -hmm. it does in a way connect it, connect it in a certain way. I don't want to talk about right now. Okay, but, so what about yeah. what about this movie, Demons? What are your final thoughts on this movie? I well, know you're chopping at the bit to talk about Demons too. Now. I know <laughs> I, I'm I'm going I'm going past it now, but um, my 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 final thought was I think people should give it a shot and go see it because it was a really fun movie, and I think you everybody who is watching you know, us talk about it should give it a shot and hell it's free. So you could just go watch it. And if you don't, uh, if you, if you're not happy with it, you can yell at us. So we're okay with that. <laughs> yeah. Tell us, uh, you guys are nuts. This movie is terrible. <laughs> All right. All right. You know what? To those people who do watch it and don't like it, who maybe wouldn't have watched it, you tried something new, you know, you did. You, we say this all the time and I can't say it enough because I talk to a lot of people about movies and I still hear the rotten tomatoes thing. Well, it got this on rotten tomato. Well, you shouldn't watch it because everybody said that's bad. Like, well, you know what? You should watch it and form your own opinion about it. You know, let's, let's think for ourselves again, people. Let's, you know, back in, back in the, Back when you used to just flip on the television and oh, there's a movie playing. Let me let me watch it and see how it is. True. You didn't stop and look at Rotten Tomatoes back then. You just kind of watched it. I'm not going to watch that because yeah, Rotten let's, Tomatoes let's, uh, didn't say it was good. <laughs> yeah, so we're uh, we're big advocates of you watching stuff and thinking for yourself about it. 
Appreciate mm. you listening to us rant and rave about it. Of course, we loved it. If you watch it and don't love it, okay. At least you watch it and try something new. Mark. Yeah. Where can people find you? You can find me on YouTube, Toys of the Time Gone By. Come and uh, check it out. I mean, I'm here. I'm I'm here all day long if you want to watch. You know, it's okay. I'm there yeah. all day long. I look forward to I don't the have day. a Las Ve- I don't have a Las Vegas residency yet. What? Oh, someday you will. I, I look forward to the day when you get some kind of a uh, toy from this movie and you showcase it on your channel cuz Oh, they got it. They they definitely got toys for I this know. movie. I know. Now, Mark, Mark is the Motu guy. He doesn't really like to showcase horror toys because they scare him. <laughs> ever ever I since he right. saw ever since he saw Chucky and how that doll came to life to kill him. Oh yeah! Oh my God! Killed the little man. So yeah. So I look in the mirror and scare myself too. So I just. All right. So and if you guys uh, like what we're doing. You can check us out on uh, Rumble, YouTube, Spotify, (laughs) wherever else you get your podcasts. All right. We'll talk to you all next time. Motu.